It is by the Chairman's Watch, 1012, and the business meeting of the World Science Fiction Society at the 75th World Science Fiction Convention will be in order. Chairman, Kevin Stanley. To my left is the timekeeper, Paul Dormer. To my right is the convention, is the uh, business meeting secretary, Linda Denneroff. And uh, to her right is the deputy presiding officer, Don Eastlake. Don will preside in those cases where I uh, either give presenting a report or have to recuse myself. Uh, he also is running the slides that you see behind me. And uh, in the back of the room here, to over in this corner here, assisted by Kuma Bear, is the official videographer of the business meeting, Lisa Hayes. Uh, that the recordings she is making are the ones that we will be uploading to the U YouTube of World Con Events channel. We understand that, and you can see here, that uh, World Con 75 is recording, and I'm told possibly live streaming this event, and it is online apparently. It is now actually running. Uh, Ah, yes, and okay, and the cart over here is also being streamed. Good. That is up on the YouTube Worldcon 75 channel. Okay. Unless otherwise voted, thank you, Don, uh, this me meeting will be recorded. Anybody can record this meeting. Uh, and I mentioned that the official recordings of the business meeting are being done over there by Lisa because of technical restriction on the camera, about every 30 minutes there will be about a one minute technical timeout to change the cartridge. <laughs> but I do want to make it clear that, and this is important but under the local, under the Convention Code of Conduct and local finish rules uh, that, uh, about consent to be recorded. If you are s sitting anywhere forward of the, of the pillars, and in any event, if you speak in debate particularly if you go up to the lectern over here, you will be recorded and you will be personally identifiable. Uh, if you st wish to participate in the meeting by watching it and potentially voting, you need to sit behind the camera feeds. All right, next slide is procedural. Oh, sorry. Um, the attendance sheets are moving around, are they? Is everybody signed in? Back there. Okay, there are, yeah, yes, you might want to send those attendance sheets around. There are attendance sheets signed in on that. Um, oh, the part about business meeting attendee ribbon, I don't think we have. Oh, yes, my boss, Deputy yeah. Ben Head of. Yeah, we've got, I yes, you are. <laughs> yes. Pick those up from the firm. Yeah, you hand them out. Yeah, you, you, hand them out. you deal with that. <laughs> yeah, actually, this is a, this is actually a good point to time to introduce. Uh, first of all, that's uh, that's Kate Seaford, who is the deputy division head of WISPAS. and uh, we have two uh, assistants for the business meeting. Mickey, yes, right there. Mickey's Mickey's run, running errands for us, and Hannah will be helping us as well. And we're very appreciative of that. She. Uh, and uh, it, the co additional copies of the official rule handout. If you didn't, if you don't have your one from registration, you can get that back. As long as, as well as that big packet of agenda. Please silence your phones and other beeping, buzzing stuff. I've done both of mine. I trust you will do yours. If you get a call and you need to take it, do not take it in this room. Go outside and take it there. Uh, we are not here to listen to your phone calls. All right. There is, oh, this goes back to the camera. The camera angle of the official recording actually is on wide angle lens and it stretches from the cart screen over to our left, the whole screen, over to just to the right of the lectern. Anything in between those points, including all of the head table and in front of here, is, is in the camera shot. If you are physically able to do so, when you are recognized, you need to come to the lectern and speak into the microphone. Um, I'd like to know, by show of hands, perhaps, 
Are there people here, pre who, people here present who are unable to stand? Actually not see anybody at the moment. That might, that might happen uh, later. Additionally, there is an aisle built down that side, not a great one, but there is an aisle down the, the your side, the stage left side of the room, uh, where people with mobies and so on can move down and get around here to the front area. <laughs> That's right. If you have not picked up an agenda, uh, there are more of them on the back table. If you have some challenges doing so, uh, try and get Mickey and, and have his attention, and you can get a copy of that there. And as I mentioned in the video, as you mentioned in the video, although debate need not be factual, it must be civil. If uh, the chair considers you out of order, you will be brought to order for that purpose. Let's go on to the next slide then. I'm not going to go through this next slide entirely, but I want to say it's likely that, because uh, I am not infallible, that the chair will make a ruling that somebody in here will disagree with sufficiently that they will want to appeal it. If uh, to appeal it, you stand, get recognition, uh, and say I appeal the ruling of the chair. Uh, if that ha and if somebody seconds that, we will debate whether it is appealed. It's the only thing that the chair is actually allowed to speak and debate on. And furthermore, the chair gets to speak both first and last, and everybody else gets to speak only once. If the majority of you here uh, vote to overturn the ruling of the chair, then it's overturned. Otherwise, it's sustained and stands. Note that a tie sustains the chair. Okay, we'll schedule overview. We have a lot of work to do this week. Let's go to the Thursday side. Thank you. This is the preliminary business meeting. The purpose of the preliminary meeting is to set up the agenda for the rest of the week, including setting the date time limits and dealing with some technical issues, receiving reports from committees, including our only permanent body, the Worcester Smart Protection Committee. We also will have some changes to the standing rules that regulate the business meeting. Those can be debated and voted on and probably will be voted on today. Furthermore, uh, if, a, if a change to the standing rules is passed today, we can also, by a two-thirds vote, a move to make that rule take effect immediately, rather than next year. There are also some resolutions. Resolutions can, can and probably will be voted upon today. And we will then also be setting time limits on amendments to the Constitution that are awaiting ratification, that stuff passed on from last year. Those constitutional amendments cannot be amended today, and there is no point in debating them today. So we will just be dealing with time limits for pending constitutional ratification, uh, amendment ratification. Then we will be considering the initial bringing up of constitutional amendments. In general, we should not expect to debate the substance of those amendments. However, they can be amended. They can be referred to committees to report to the main business meeting. Uh, and they can also be killed by, generally by the process of postpone indefinitely. If uh, on the question of post postpone indefinitely is a motion that, I don't know if we have a slide on it or not. I don't think we do. Uh, I took it out. I'm pretty sure I took it out. Yeah. Uh, postpone indefinitely is a motion that would kill a new proposal for the duration. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, a postpone indefinitely can happen only at this meeting. Hmm? Slide 13. Slide 15. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it takes a two-thirds vote. It has a limited amount of debate. Uh, just a couple, just four minutes. Two minutes and two minutes for those people who think the motion should be killed for this year. Two minutes for those who think it should be debated this year. Uh, noting that whoever made the motion that is being targeted gets preference in speaking to stupend their motion. So a limited amount of debate and a two-thirds vote can kill it. Objection to consideration, we are trying not to use. It would kill a motion without debate. I do not foresee that being used. I don't see any motions on the agenda likely to trigger it. So let's go back to the preliminary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fitted a reminder that presentations for uh, 2018 Worldcon, for the 2018 Worldcon and bids for 2019 and later will happen in this room and at, uh, well, after, actually, it happened here, after this meeting is over, at uh, 1300 day, on the right day, right? It's yes, Thursday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can go to eight, slide eight. 
looking ahead to the rest of the week. Uh, on Friday, oh, Mark Protection Committee nominations. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, the elections for the Mark Protection Committee will take place tomorrow. Uh, anything, any changes, <coughs> resolutions, or standing rule changes that we didn't get done today will be dealt with tomorrow. We'll start, be, we'll start working on constitutional amendments passed on from last year. And then if we get that far, we'll get on to new constitutional amendments. Saturday is the site selection business meeting, and we've got a bit of a change in the schedule there that we've had to do for a lot of different reasons. Note that there's a four-hour block of time on Saturday from 10 to 14, rather than uh, uh, normally ending at 13. So uh, the, we will start, because it is the site selection meeting, the first item of business by rule is the announcement of the site selection results for the 2019 World Cup and then an initial presentation from that winner, not to exceed 15 minutes, including any questions. Uh, we encourage people with questions of bids, by the way, to go talk to them at their fan tables. Uh, we, as pointed out in, our, in a panel we had yesterday, I really don't want this meeting used up with time about what's the weather like, okay, or, you know, so please, thank you. Um, the 2018 Worldcon has an opportunity to make a presentation and take questions, and that up to a maximum of 15 minutes. There may be time for a short presentation from any 2020 bids. There will not be time for anything else. We anticipate recessing the meeting after the site selection business is over, not before 10.30, if you're familiar with how tennis matches are scheduled. It's tennis, tennis scheduling. There will be the Worldcon Chairs photo session will take place here. Uh, it, we will have to do some rearranging in order to make enough room for the former chairs to be here. It's a time for you to come and take our photos if you'd like. And then substantive business other than site selection will resume not before 11, but that still gives us a three hour block of time from, uh, from 11 to 14 on uh, uh, Saturday. If, as I expect, there will, then we will not get through the entire agenda. We will go into the overflow session for the third year in a row. That will be Sunday, and it's anything we haven't dealt with, um, and anything that got postponed to that point, I think there might be some, I'm not sure. And then the final adjournment, which is adjournment CDA meeting to end this year's meetings. And then about 15 minutes later, if you're interested, the WISPA Smart Protection Committee will meet in this same room because we are required to meet and we're not allowed to meet until after the business meeting has adjourned the final. Uh -huh. All right. Before I move on, are there any questions? Does anybody? Uh, oh, I, remember, unless you can't stand to get my attention, you need to stand. Are there any questions regarding procedure or schedule? Seeing none, we will move on to the preliminary business meeting agenda. Okay, yeah, slide 11. Okay, we're setting the agenda. If we refer anything to a committee today, it has to report back to somewhere in the main meeting. Uh, some things will be, uh, we may, we may, there will be debate on things other than constitutional amendments. The procedure under our rules is for the chair to suggest a default, and uh, you see now, and we we'll vote on that. That's actually kind of there's a there's a change in the standing rules coming up on that that I want that we'll we'll go into this in more depth when we get to it fairly soon, I promise. Um, and if the meeting time runs out, then business just rolls on to the next day. By the way, debate time limits once set are per day. If we debate something at one day and we don't finish it and we go into and we start it over the next day, it's debate time limits go back to its reset to the beginning. We will receive reports from committees that may include motions. They are in the agenda if they did so. Let's see, slide 12. Uh, standing rules, chain has said that, will can be dealt with today. We'll do the Mark Protection Committee nominations when we get to that point of the report. Uh, talk, okay, yeah, slide 13 was postponed indefinitely, which we discussed. And therefore, I believe we can get to substantive business and it only took me 15 minutes. Okay. All right. In your agendas. 
We have standing rule changes. The standing rules are the rules for the regulation of the business meeting itself. These rules changes can be voted on today. If passed, they take effect next year unless we move to suspend the rules by a two-thirds vote and have them take effect immediately. Now then, I gotta get to my own agenda page. Page two. Item A1 has to do with candidate regions. Now these this motion came to us from the Wispus, um, sorry, the business meeting nitpicking and fly specking committee. And I would ask Mr. Eastlake on behalf of the Committee to explain this motion. And this counts as the initial debate. Sure. I'm <coughs> uh, Lake. Uh, I'm uh, reporting on behalf of the Nipicking and Fly Specking Committee, which is supposed to uh, keep an eye on the rules and polish them up. So, <clears throat> uh, the regions. Oh, I just realized. Is there any objection to two minutes of debate on this? Okay, yeah, sorry. Thank you. So, the, the, there used to be a definition of regions of North America. And uh, this has all been removed from the Constitution and no longer has any effect anywhere but the verbiage in the standing rules related to nominations for the Market Protection Committee was left in the standing rules. Uh, and so this text that we spoken out here is text which, as far as I understand, has no effect at all. And it's, it's really just excess leftover stuff because we did an incomplete job at removing the regions. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against this? Hearing none, is there any objection to adopting this? This is passed by unanimous consent. Is there any objection to having this take effect immediately? Hearing none, it takes effect immediately. <laughs> Item A2 on page three. <coughs> No vanishing business. The chair suggests two minutes. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, we will go on. Mr. Eastlake. Who wants to see if there's any objection to the motion? That's a good point. Is there any objection to adopting this, this proposal? And having a take before it doesn't really matter, actually, but, uh, at this point. But any Mr. Objection? Chairman, yes. would you read the motion? Uh, just yes. for the, I appreciate for the record. it. Very well. This is to amend the standing rules by inserting a new sentence into the first sentence. Uh, rule 2.1. An item of new business submitted in advance that has been distributed to the membership may not be withdrawn without leave of the business meeting. In other words, once, once, some, once, uh, once the stuff has been submitted and we're past the deadlines, you cannot pull it back out. Uh, question? Uh, you, you, the member will come to a microphone, please. <laughs> But it's not a point of information. You're asking a, a parliamentary inquiry about the effect of the motion, I think? Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to ask, I'm going to allow that. I'm going to count, count the total. Very sorry. My name is Kate Secor, and my question is, so the actual effect of this rule would only apply after the deadline for submitting new business has passed? I believe that was the intent. Uh, it, it's stated to be in terms of distribution to the membership. So basically, the idea is that if, if the membership has gotten actual notice, so you know, by distribution, that there is some piece of a business pending, so they are expecting it to be there, then it cannot be withdrawn. It doesn't actually It is a little bit different, I will say that. Yeah. Uh, in that case, uh, thank you, Ms. Sigmar. Uh, Mr. Eastlake, would you explain this motion, and we'll start this as the Sure. Uh, this, we may take longer on this than I thought. Hold on. The way we do things is a little bit different from Robert's rules. Under Robert's rules, you sometimes are required to give notice of a motion in advance. You say, I give notice that I will be submitting this motion to the business meeting. And in that case, actually anybody can submit a motion that was within the scope of that notice. Of course, the person who gave the notice is going to give a priority. Our rules are different. Our rules say that you actually submit the motion in advance. And uh, this has led to some confusion uh, because people who have submitted a motion in advance at least in one instance, felt that they should be allowed to withdraw that motion. But this doesn't seem fair. If they were giving notice in advance that some, and, and then decided not to submit the motion, even though they had given notice of it, somebody else could. But when they've actually submitted the motion, if they were allowed to withdraw it, the business vanishes. And somebody else who thought that it was going to come up and might have submitted the motion themselves 
uh, would not have submitted it in advance because they assumed it was already on the agenda. So this is to fix that. Uh, of course, the business meeting can always allow withdrawal, you know, withdrawal, uh, but uh, without permission of the business meeting, once the membership has been given notice of it, then it's my, uh, the feeling of the nitpicking and fly speaking committee that it should appear on the agenda. This uses up all the debate time currently in favor of it. Uh, there's one, uh, one minute uh, against it. Ooh, oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, is there any objection to, uh, let's extend this to six minutes total. Okay, let's work on that six minutes. Actually, let's just reset it to six minutes now, because this may take a moment to get through it. Okay, uh, so that's uh, fine. Uh, speech against, I'm three, gonna, three, each. three each, yeah, we're starting over at six. Mr. Yellow, this is against. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this is actually a motion to amend, and I would request that the uh, presiding officer figure out the exact wording should this motion be adopted. Uh, there is nothing to prevent the business meeting staff from distributing way early. I would like to suggest that the ability to withdraw clock does not start until the deadline for submitting new business has passed. A moment, well, I know I, that's actually not that hard to do, but I just have to find the right reference to, to, to the rules in question. Um, that was against, it's, 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 amendments are antithetical or are opposed to a motion technically. There's no such thing as a friendly amendment post. Uh, I just want to, where is the deadline rule though? Deadline yes, it, it is in 2.1, yeah, okay, fine. It's good, it's good, I don't have to cross <coughs> Um, yes, you go ahead while I look for the right rule here, and I'm using up some of our time again, I know. Um, a moment while I consult with the parliamentarian. If you're wondering why, the, uh, and the reason I'm not over there is because the computer is actually locked to that table, so I can't. Date 
mentioned in the rule? Is that the standard submission date of two weeks prior? Yes, because it's a, the reason it's stated the way it is is this is adding a sentence to the existing rule 2.1. Thank you. Uh, I don't feel the need to keep restating everything over and over again within a rule. It's all in one rule. Okay. This is just the, you couldn't withdraw it. Okay, I've used a lot of time here. Uh, the chair, uh, uh, yeah. person standing. No, uh, I'm not standing. I'm no, all the way over. I'll Mr. Start. Matthews, I'm aware of the member standing. The chair recognizes Mr. Eastlake. I, I want to speak against the amendment. This is yeah. Alan Eastlake. I believe this amendment uh, defeats the purpose of the rule entirely. The idea is that you're a member, you're out there, you get notice that some motion is going to appear for the business meeting, and you basically feel confident that that's going to come up, and you don't have to submit your own version of the motion or anything like that. Uh, by putting in this rule that allows it to be withdrawn by implication that this addition means it, it can't be withdrawn even if it's been distributed to membership as long as that withdrawal is before the deadline. So it can be withdrawn like one day before the deadline or you know you can pick up the phone one minute before the deadline and call the administrators and say I withdraw the motion. So the member who's, members out there who've gotten notice and thought this was going to be on the agenda I really have no practical opportunity to submit their own motion. So this amendment it really makes the whole thing a nullity in my mind as far as practically solving the potential problem of vanishing business. So I speak against the amendment. The chair suggests that we have surprisingly ran into a minefield on this one and that we would probably be better off by referring it to a committee consisting of Mr. Eastlake and Mr. Yallow to come up with a wording that might na navigate this field to be discussed yesterday. Mr. Chairman, may I suggest an odd number of members on the committee? <laughs> You are both odd. You are both odd. Yeah, the chair likes that. Uh, the, 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 I'm sorry. What was that? The, okay, it's fine. Um, the, the chair thus the, the chair's suggestion is that we cur that we refer this proposal and the pending amendment to a committee consisting of Mr. Yallo, Mr. Eastlake, and Ms. Secor. So moved. Yeah, I, is there any objection to re so referring it? Hearing none, item A2 is referred to that committee with instructions to report back to the main business meeting. This meeting is recessed for one minute. On Friday, yes, the main business meeting begins. On <laughs> the meeting will return to order. When I say one minute, I mean it. <laughs> All right. Item A.3 is the date time streamlining. <coughs> this would replace the existing process for setting the date time limits with the following Rule 3.1. Oh, there's a typo in it, but that we could fix, typos can be fixed by without a without motion. Uh, Are you sure? The presi the, the, I am sure, yes, thank you. The presiding officer shall designate the default date time for main motions. If an objection is raised to this default time, the business meeting shall vote on it without debate. If the designated time is defeated, the business meeting may, by majority vote, set the initial debate time limit for any motion to any, I believe we actually want the word, strike the word even, from that. It's redundant. Uh, to any positive whole even number of minutes, sorry, whole is the word we want to get rid of. Even is the number you want. No, even, even is the number of the, we, was the intent of the committee, but whole is redundant because even yes. numbers are whole numbers. So then you are whole. Yes, thank you. That's right. Pardon me there, like it. Let me try again. Uh, the, the second, if that designated time is defeated, the business meeting may, by majority vote, set the initial debate time for any motion to any positive even number of minutes up to thirty. This would we think, reduce the amount of time that it takes to uh, do debate time limits. Mr. Eastlake. Yeah, this is uh, perhaps going to keep using problem basically with larger numbers. Of I'm, asking, I'm actually asking to explain the effect of it rather than then we'll set the debate time on it. But the chair has oh, asked for eight minutes. Is there any objection to eight minutes? 
Okay, thank you, sir. Go on, sir. I are am I explaining the effect or do yeah, go ahead and explain it. Okay. Um, well, unfortunately, we haven't gotten to that part of the agenda yet, so you haven't seen how it works. But uh, what has happened in the past is the chair recommends a debate time limit. If there's no objection, that's fine, but almost always somebody objects, and then people propose different values, and we end up with a uh, sort of a slate of nominees, nominated time limits, and go through and vote on them from the starting with the longest and down towards the shortest, and the first one to get the majority is the selected one. Very commonly, there's a lot of different options to vote on, and the one ultimately selected is exactly the one that the chairman originally suggested, resulting in a lot of wasted time, it would seem. So this is intended to avoid that, as if most people want the amount selected by the chair, then we can just do it. If really a majority doesn't like the time selected by the chair, then we will go with the previous procedure. I believe currently it only says whole number of minutes. Now, made the even number of minutes, it slightly reduces the number of options. And it also adds a limit of 30 minutes. If, if there really was something you really wanted to debate for more than 30 minutes at a session, you could still do that, but it would take a two-thirds vote to suspend the rules to do it, which is probably reasonable to allocate such a huge block of time. So that's the intended effect of the motion. So you want to speak against this proposal? Uh, you, did you want to speak against it? I want to amend it. Um, I was going to recognize uh, Dr. Lurie first. So. Yes, I'm, I'm Perry and Lurie, L-U-R-I-E. Um, I would like to amend the motion to replace may with shall, uh, because what if they don't? There, there is no debate limit. <laughs> is there any objection? Is the business meeting shall by majority vote? <laughs> Okay, uh, very well. You, uh, uh, yes. What? Cliff, I keep forgetting. Sorry. Please go to the microphone there. I apologize for the. Did I don't. Can I get a second? Do we need to vote on that? Well, I asked unanimous consent. Did anybody object to it? I saw no. so, uh, I didn't hear it. Mr. Chairman, I propose to insert after the word defeated, then the business meeting shall proceed to vote on an initial, de on initial debate times of 30, 24, 18, 12, and 6 minutes in that order for adoption by majority vote. If all of those times are defeated, and then continue as is. Can I get your name? Cliff Dunn, the UNF. Uh, it's hard without that in, having that in writing. It I be, have it in writing. Yeah, I know you do. It's a, <laughs> uh, also on the street. Yeah. It's going to go away. Yeah, it's going to go away soon. Can they back it up? No. It's, it would, this is a proposal to produce a preset list of, de, of numbers. The chair suggests it might, okay, I'm not here to debate on this, but all right, is there a second to the member's motion to put in a, a laundry list of, of default times to be voted upon? Without a, without a second, the motion fails. Thank you. All right. I've, uh, I, I sort of treated the, the, the Mr. Eastlake's explanation as debate in favor of it, if no one, but is there anyone who wishes to speak against the proposal? Is there any objection to adopting it? Okay. Is there any objection to having it take effect immediately? Okay. Hearing none. Now immediately put every debate time that's coming up to us to a vote right now by unanimous consent is if you forgot to put, have them listed in the agenda, so we'll take them up as we go along. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, and I did it, and I made this my, my mistake. I admit it. Next is electronic documents. Is, is A4 on page four. Electronic documents are a thing. The chair suggests 10 minutes. Is there any objection? Hearing none. A4 is moved to amend Standing Rule 2.2 by striking out and adding text for the purpose of requiring the Worldcon Committee to be responsible for providing copies of all proposals submitted before the specified deadline to the attendees of the business meeting. It will, the motion, if amended, would, or the rule, rather, if amended, would read Rule 2.2, Requirements for Submission of New Business. 
All proposals for non-privileged new business shall be submitted to the presiding officer before the deadline in Rule 2.1. The Worldcon Committee shall be responsible for providing copies of all proposals to the WISPIS membership. All proposals must be legibly and or electronically signed by a maker and at least one seconder. We have 10 minutes of debate time. The chair recognizes Mr. Dunn to make the initial speech as the maker of the motion. Mr. Chairman, this is effectively the adoption of existing practice. I would, I think some of us on the SMOS list serve were rather surprised when we were informed that in fact, though for many years the World Con Committee has provided copies of all of the business coming before the meeting, that they were not in fact required to do so. Additionally, there is technically no requirement to accept electronic signatures in spite of the fact that almost everything is being sent back and forth electronically these days. I know everything I tender was sent in electronically. I, uh, recognize, I recognize that there is a concern that somebody could decide to submit Lord of the Rings as an amendment to the standing rules, and I think the general consensus was that if something like that were done, the committee would be able to say, if you really want to debate this, we can print it off, but this is a massive item and it would be an expense. Otherwise, I think if any reasonable proposal were not printed off by the Worldcon Committee, there would be objections that the committee was trying to silence someone and there will be generalized bad blood. So since it's been practiced for some years, I think we should just write it down. The chair recognizes Ms. Denneroff. Linda Denneroff, I'm speaking against this motion. As you know, I've been the secretary of the business meeting for several years and I have been uh, uploading the agenda to the meet, and I have done this voluntarily. But someday somebody else is going to be the secretary of the business meeting, and they may simply not have the time or the skills to be able to do this. Therefore, I don't think it's right to put this in effect as a permanent thing, because it will depend on whoever is the secretary of the business meeting. Who wish to speak in favor of this you have a okay. member will please oh that's right. You you, you uh are, you have a you can't stand, you have a problem standing, correct? Wait, okay. Yeah, I'm it's I'm okay. I'm I'm fine. Fine. Well no, it's okay. It's all right. You can go ahead and use the handheld, it's fine. But we don't wanna we don't wanna impose undue hardship on people. Well I this is a question. I have a request for information about the electronic signatures that are mentioned signed electronically. Um, yes. There are more than one way to sign things electronically that I'm aware of, and I think it may get complica very complicated very soon if it right, is. The member is now getting into debate reasons on it. I'll answer the question on so on. on or the que I'll answer the question. The question is the rule does not address the technology that is left it is left up to the Worldcon Committee to work out how they would do it, how they would implement it. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the proposal? And if you can, please stand. Uh, I hear I've seen nobody. Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Lurie. <laughs> Don't feel you have to debate something just because there's time. <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, no offense intended. No offense intended. Uh, still Dr. Lurie. Um, this does not require the secretary of the business meeting to post things electronically. It merely enables them to do so. Anyone else wishing to speak against the proposal? Um, uh, yes, Mr. Bloom. One of the things that I have a problem with in this motion is that the WISPUS membership is everyone who is a member of the Worldcom. Making copies available to everyone as, as opposed to um, making the putting it in some place where, where it's accessible to everyone is an extreme burden on a world con since it would mean that in addition to printing your souvenir book and your pocket program and everything you would have to print the agenda and since you don't get the agenda until two weeks in advance you would have to expensively print the agenda to hand out to everyone at registration anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the proposal uh, yes uh, Ms. Jones, if you're close enough, I can read your name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still stinking. 
Lenore Jones, uh, I don't believe the proposal requires paper copies. Uh, speech against? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Yellow was first. Still Ben Yellow. Um, since it is required to be able to be distributed to every member, that includes members who do not have things such as web access, email, or anything like that. And we do have such members. Therefore, I believe that this motion should be defeated and we can worry about it later on because Linda so far has still been willing to do this kind of thing instead of having it prescribed. Um, before continuing, I believe I should make it clear that the chair rules that this motion, if passed, imposes additional financial burdens, potential burdens on roll count committees, and therefore, in accordance with uh, the constitutional requirements, the next two world cons following this one would not necessarily be bound by it. They could if they wish, but they would not be bound by it. They are not, we are not allowed to impose burdens on the, on the next two world cons. Uh, everybody after that are presumed to have actually read that rules were changed in between. All right, uh, speech in favor. Another speech against, yes. Anne Marie Riddle. Um, I feel that the um, requirement and uh, ensconcing this in the standing rules is more than we need. We currently have a system where we are distributing uh, copies of the, of the business, both electronically and effectively in paper, even though they might have been a whole 10 minutes late, and yet everyone ended up with it. Um, to ensconce this in writing imposes a burden, as Kevin says, a financial burden. Um, it doesn't allow for technological advances that may change uh, in the near future as things have been evolving very rapidly. Um, you never know how many copies are going to be needed just looking at the size of this audience versus the number of people that we've had in business meeting for the past several years. Um, and I think the current practice is sufficient such that the business meeting has been providing proper documentation to all who need it in a timely fashion. I don't think it needs to be written down and made a requirement. A moment. to ending the debate and bringing the motion to the vote. I was rising for that purpose. If there is, is, is there any objection to reminding people that the way you, you indicate you're not objecting is to be quiet. Uh, is there any objection to ending the debate and bringing the motion to a vote? Hearing none, on this motion to, uh, which is the amendment to rule 2.2, all those in favor of the motion raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the negative has it, the motion fails. Question, Mr. Chairman. A moment. Yes, go ahead and go to the microphone. Are we supposed to be holding these up when we vote? Yes. No, only, only for serpentine. Okay, yeah. if you if, Well, if you want to hold them up, you can. It's not really hurt. I mean, I'm, I'll, it, 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 hold the cards up if you wish or not. I'm, I'm not thoroughly worried about it one way or the other. It improves visibility. If, of course, if it's close at all, we will uh, we will end up with a county vote anyway. If we go to a county, if the vote goes to a serpentine vote, you cannot stand. You can use the blue card. That's, that's basically that's the one intent. of the reasons for it. Well, yeah. Okay, item A dot five, which is a, a motion to officially ban smoking at all our meetings, even if we are in a location where smoking is permitted, which hasn't happened for a long time. 
Uh, and then we'll have some additional material in there. Is there any objection to adopting this? I think there is. Very well. Is there any objection to adopting two minutes as the debate time? Very well. Uh, Dr. Lurie, are you speaking in favor? Uh, well, I, it's, a, it's a question. Okay, the, the, the member will state her query. Yes, does this apply to electronic cigarettes <laughs> as well? The motion does not, this does not address it. It would be left up to the business meeting and the administering WorldCon. A lot, if you don't see it explicit, it's generally left up to the WorldCon and its business meeting. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak either for or against this motion? Just a show of hands. Anyone want to speak? Very well. On this motion, is, you have a question. There's a designated smoking area in front of the front entrance of the building. Is this location one which uh, allows smoking as well? No, this, this particular location does not allow smoking. And I did not anticipate this motion being adopted with immediate effect anyway. Is there anyone else who still wants to speak for, against, sideways, or up and down on this motion? <laughs> I apologize. I shouldn't be flippant like that. Is there any objection to adopting item 8.5? Hearing none, it is adopted. Technically, it doesn't take effect until next year. Do we need a time change? Not yet? Okay. That takes us on to resolutions. Yeah. I gotta change pages up here. Item B.1 is a uh, motion to extend the Hugo Award eligibility for uh, uh, Kim Yo Nawa, uh, or your name for one year and would require a two-thirds vote. Is there is there any Anyone wishes to speak for or again? Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, the chair suggests two minutes. Is there any objection? Okay. Is there anyone who wishes to speak either for or against this? Is there any objection to extending the eligibility of this item under B1? Hearing none, the motion passes by unanimous consent. All right, now we get to a somewhat more complicated one. Item B.2 is a resolution that would create a committee uh, appointed to deal with, to study the uh, best professional artists and best fan artists uh, sections of the Constitution and make recommendations. Uh, and it also has had submitted a proposed amendment that would substitute a different resolution in its place. Uh, is there any objection to 10 minutes total on this? Hearing none, we'll go with 10 minutes. We'll extend it if we necessary. So the motion on the floor initially is the initial resolution, but the next question in front of it is an amendment by substitution proposed by Mr. Doherty and Mr. White that would replace the original resolution with a different resolution. Now, the question that's going to be before us is basically which, which do we do with? Do we deal with the substitute or the original? Once we've decided which one we're going to consider, then we actually consider the proposal substantively. Is there any question on procedure there? Very well then. Um, the amendment by substitution, which is going to be, are we going to take a substitute, would be to create a Hugo Award study committee that the chair would appoint that would study revisions to Article 3 to the Hugo Awards, including any such proposals for amending Article 3 as may be referred to it by the business meeting or suggested by others, to make recommendations which may include proposing constitutional amendments to next year's business meeting, and to authorize the chair of the committee, whoever, the, whoever I appoint as chair, uh, to appoint other persons. That last bit is pretty common. We do that regularly. Uh, Mr. Doherty, you are nominally the person who made the uh, a motion by staff, uh, uh, but before I, I'm about to recognize you, is there a parliamentary, parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Adams, or Dr. Adams, you'll state your parliamentary inquiry. By the way, I don't know all of you who have doctorates, or, or <laughs> you've got to correct me if I need to use that. Thank you. Uh, Two-part parliamentary inquiry. Um, first, um, the, uh, just a confirmation, please, from the head table that we will be debating and passing this today and creating this committee today rather than 
40 misdemeanors. Is that correct? That is correct. The motion will, whatever we decide between these two, we will then vote yes or no on whatever survives this initial process, and it will, it, today is the decision day on whether to create the committee. Okay. And the second one is, if it passes at all, um, how will this affect other, um, if, if any effect at all, other proposals later in the agenda for uh, revisions to the Hugo's? The meeting, the preliminary business meeting cannot send stuff on to next year's Worldcon either, either directly or by way of committee. It can, however, refer items that are in this agenda to a committee to report back later in the Worldcon, starting at the main business meeting. The main business meeting could then move to potentially, say, refer those proposals back to the committee and say, come back next year with ideas. Is that? Yeah. Okay. I just said I want to make sure everyone else did. Is there any question of, of, of the pro of process on how you can refer things onward? The member will come to the podium and state their question. <laughs> Wait till you're at the microphone. Thank you. Hi. Jeff Thorpe. Um, I'm a little confused because the uh, amendment article specifically makes reference to uh, proposing constitutional amendments to the 2018 business meeting. Yes. Uh, if you're appointing a committee today, you said you could only report later in the, to this meeting. Uh, this, okay, you want me to address your question now? Yes. That's, this committee, if created, its job in general is to uh, propose constitutional amendments if it so chooses. It says may. Make recommendations which may include these to next year's meeting. This, but, our, but we as a meeting can go ahead and charge it with other things along the way. For instance, Hypothetically, we could create this committee with this charge in it and then refer motions to it with an additional charge at the time saying, come back tomorrow with suggestions. We're the same group creating the committee. We can change the charge in the process as part of the motion to refer. All right. Does that answer the member? Does the member understand? I agree. <laughs> We are not, we cannot tie our own hands. If we tie them, we can immediately unbind them by just adding additional charges on the spot. If we were like tomorrow, we might have a problem with that, but we're the same body, okay? All right, fine one, thank you. Mr. Doherty, would you like to speak in favor of the amendment? All right, how much of the time have we, we used up? Two minutes. We used two minutes and all that stuff, so we have eight minutes remaining. Four minutes each side, thank you. Vincent Dockerty, uh, DOCH ER um, The main purpose of this uh, substitution is to broaden the study committee to potentially look at all categories of the Hugos. The, the initial one was the two artist categories, and we're well aware of a number of other categories which are proposed to be changed. I'm guilty for proposing some of those myself. Um, so basically the idea is this study committee will look at all of the Hugo categories, um, depending on what happens this weekend, either refer them to the main business meeting or bring recommendations to next year's business meeting. Uh, in terms of the content of it, we've spent a number of years, shall we say, responding to external attack. I think it's time that we look at the, uh, shall we say, the fitness for purpose of the categories, balancing of them, how well they're actually being used, and the time is right to do a comprehensive review of the categories. Here. Here's making some notes for something that is likely to come up here. All right, uh, that was a speech in favor of adopting the substitute as what we will consider yes or no. The, uh, speech against adopting the substitute. Request for information, the maker. Um, the makers yielded the floor. You could go ahead. I mean, you go ahead and come up and use some big time against and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, go ahead and ask your question. It's just possible that the previous speaker might choose to ask you to yield some of your time to hear the answer. Thank you. Uh, Dashoff, uh, I'd like to know, is it in order for the, sub, for the committee, if formed, to form subcommittees? Or is it required that they act as one committee of all proposals? Ah, that's, a par that's actually a parliamentary inquiry, it turns out. And I can answer that one. That's, that's, that's a neutral parliamentary inquiry. Under the standing rules, we have a fairly open-ended require a, a rule that allows committees to organize themselves as they see fit as long as it's not actually prohibited by any, any additional rule. So the straight answer to what you said is yes, they can create subcommittees if they want because any committee can 
create subcommittees <coughs> under Robert's Rules of Order. All right. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak against the idea of creating, of, of a, putting the substitute before us as the main proposal? Is there anyone else who wants to speak one way or the other on whether or not to adopt the substitute as the, okay, uh, yes, you're the other maker. You certainly get a chance, yes. Uh, Mr. White. That's, uh, that's Professor Dr. Weiser for being really formal, but uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have to be. Uh, just to, Essentially, I, I speak on behalf of the, the makers of the original proposal, which was to examine the best artist categories where we felt that there were some very glaring issues that became apparent in the administration of the awards this year. Um, it has been put to us that it would be much better to broaden the remit of such a committee to examine the entire structure of the new goes in the round. Um, and I think all four of us uh, who proposed the original resolution have agreed to that. Um, and I uh, indeed put my name to the, uh, to the amendment uh, accordingly. So I urge you all to vote for the amendment and uh, then to vote for the resolution as amended. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any objection to adopting the substitute in place of the original proposal? Hearing none, the substitute is adopted and now, as the proposal we are debating, <laughs> which gets caught up, I won't get it. I'm just explaining. For you. We have adopted the substitute as the thing that is now before the meeting. We have not adopted the resolution itself. Mr. Chairman? I will get to you in a moment. That's why you need to go into a Zen state for one hour. The chair suggests that we reset the debate clock to eight minutes total for the resolution. Is there any objection to doing so? Hearing on word eight minutes. Okay, Mr. Bloom, is this a speech in favor or no? Uh, is there any, before, is it? This is a, an incidental motion. Okay, fine, thank you. What did anyone say? All right, the secretary does need some more time to get caught up and I'm not charging that against either side at this point. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Bloom. Chairman, yes. I move that because, uh, Ken Bloom, because we cannot actually create a permanent committee today, I move that we postpone consideration of this activity until tomorrow's session. The chair was going to suggest, since we can create, we can create this committee today. We can create, we can create this committee. Yeah, but you can't charge it the way it's charged. Uh, and, and the chair was going to then suggest that we suspend the rules and refer things to it, to uh, refer some things to it with instructions to report back tomorrow. Two thirds vote. It's clear that people want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> The chair, the chair apologizes. Is he, uh, he, that, that the way the chair did that was wrong. And I, I, the chair apologizes. <laughs> the, the, the chair's going. Uh, you, know, you withdraw that motion for, for the benefit. Uh, okay. Give me, give us a chance. Another way, and uh, if not, we'll come back to it. Okay. All right. The question before us is, is whether to adopt the resolution listed as B.2.1 or B. Two, one, with the charges shown. Is there any objection to uh, to adopting this resolution? I see objection. Is there one, someone wishing to debate for in favor of the of the resolution itself? Want to speak against it, Mr. Oakes? Mr. Chair, uh, Ron Oakes. I propose that we amend section one, where it says article three, adding uh, comma section 3.3. So we limit the scope of this to only changing the Hugo categories and do not allow the committee to mess with the voting procedures or nomination procedures, which we have spent a lot of the last few years uh, tinkering with as that is the intent of the committee, but let's not let the charge accidentally get away from the, uh, the intent. There's a, this is a motion to, uh, 
to strike out the word Article 3 and insert Section 3.3. 3.3 is the long, is the actual list of categories. It would narrow the charge of the committee to only consider the categories and nothing else. Is there any objection to this motion? It, the chair reminds members that the way you just state that you do not object is to not say anything. I'm going to. I heard any sound at all. I started to hear. Is there a second to the member's motion? Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Oakes. Uh, you made the motion to amend. You get to speak to it, Tori. Give me one second. Yes, the secretary needs to get caught up to this point. This again, while she's doing that, this uh, paragraph one of the resolution says Article Three. This would strike out the words Article 3 and insert Section 3.3. If you have your booklet, this is on uh, page 4. Six. Oh, four. Four. four of this thing. Of this thing, which you got at, it's the, it, 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 when you register. There's five minutes of date time that comes out of the whole thing. Okay, has the secretary caught up? All right. In favor of the amendment, Mr. Oakes. Yeah, we've spent the last several years um, tinkering with the voting and nomination process to try to deal with issues. Uh, as originally stated, allowing this committee to uh, deal with Article 3, technically it let them continue to make adjustments to that. I do not believe that was the intent of the makers of the motion. Just want to go ahead and restrict them to just dealing with the Hugo categories themselves, and this restricts them that way. Just puts a little bit of a safety net on them. A speech against the amendment, uh, Ms. Secor. I'm still Kate Seifer. While I appreciate the intent of the amendment, there's a lot of technical language around defining professional and other things like defining when you can move things that are in sections like 3.2. Um, I'm concerned that, especially with the original charge of let's look at what defines fan artist and professional artist, if we restrict the committee only to 3.3, they won't be able to address deficiencies that exist in other technical parts of the definitions of the categories because those are excluded from that article. Speech, that was a speech against the amendment to narrow the scope of the committee. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the amendment to narrow the scope? Is there anyone else who wishes to speak against narrowing the scope? Uh, over here. Hi, uh, Paul Chenoway. Uh, yeah, sorry, this, is, this will be very quick, but um, the committee is not going to be empowered to do anything. It's only going to be making recommendations uh, to future sessions of the business meeting, I believe. Is that correct? That's correct. It can't, it, yeah. it makes recommendations. So there's no reason to narrow the scope. I mean, if they, have, if they want to go off and come up with lots of proposals, isn't that up to them? <laughs> that was a speech. Yeah, that was a speech. Paul Treadway. Uh, that was a speech against the amendment to, to narrow the scope. Is there someone else who watches the room? Yes. Mr. Reach is like in favor of narrowing the committee scope. Uh, actually, not. I moved to suspend the rules to allow a second order amendment to strike out 3.3 and insert 3.2 and 3.3. Is there any objection to suspending the rules and changing the amendment itself to? Read at sections 3.2 and 3.3. Yes. There were there are objections. Uh, <coughs> on the this is a non uh, on, a two thirds vote being necessary to suspend the rules to allow a second order amendment. This doesn't actually change the underlying proposal. It changes the amendment. A two thirds vote being necessary. All those in favor of suspending the rules to allow this the change, uh, Mr. Reeslake proposed. To be considered. Hands down. Those opposed to suspending the rules. Hands down, there being more than two thirds in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. Uh, to, we, are, we have the second order amendment that we were just trying to consider again. This is an amendment to change the amendment itself, uh, second order amendment, so that it would read, 
to change the 3.3 to 3.2 and 3.3. Do we need to debate that? Uh, all, okay, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor of amending the amendment by, by inserting 3.2 and in front of 3.3, raise your hands. All those hands down. Those opposed, hands down. The affirmative has it. The amendment is modified. The amendment now reads to insert or to strike out Article 3 and insert Section 3.2 and 3.3. Is there anyone unclear on what the amendment is? Okay. The, there is a resolution listed as 3.2.1. Okay. Is, there is an amendment that has been proposed to it that in Clause 1 would strike out the words Article 3. Which would get replaced. Well, we do it in, every, in both places. Yeah. Oh, it's, to, it's to strike out Article 3 and insert Section 3.2 and 3.3. We would do it in both places. It would be in both places. It has to be consistent. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense otherwise. Let me see, see how much time is left here. Is there anyone who still wishes to speak to the amendment? which is to change Article 3 to Sections 3.2 and 3.3. Very well, let's put it to a vote then. On the amendment to strike out everywhere it occurs in the motion, <laughs> Article 3 and insert Sections 3.2 and 3.3. All those in favor of the amendment, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed, hands down. The affirmative has it. The amendment, or the resolution is amended by putting 3.2 and 3.3 in the places where Article 3 occurred. I believe we have about, how much total time do you have? About, 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 about. So you've got about around six minutes left to go back down to it there. So, yes, the secretary is starting to catch up, and while she's doing that, um, the, now I see that was an amendment, therefore we're back at the, 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 main, we're back the main motion now as amended. The next speech would be in favor of the resolution itself. We're at the bottom of the stack again. Yes. Joshua Prennandold, I would like to move to call the question. Second. 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 Uh, that's a motion to end the debate and bring the whole thing to a vote, as required by the rules. This is not debate. I'm just asking, is there any, by show of hands, is there anybody else who wishes to speak either for or against this resolution? Is there any objection to ending the debate and bringing to a vote? Very well. On the question itself, the resolution, as amended, to create a new award study committee to study revisions to sections 3.2 and 3.3, of the Wisconsin Constitution, including any such proposals for amending those sections as may be referred to it by the business meeting or suggested by others. All those in favor of the resolution itself, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. <laughs> the committee has been created. Now, remember that the resolution itself allows whoever is appointed as chair to add members to the committee at their discretion. Therefore, once I have announced the initial appointments, if you wish to be appointed to this committee, you have to go talk to the chairman of that committee because the chairman of this meeting is not interested in discussing this with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for what purpose does the member rise, Dr. Lurie? A question. A question. Come to the microphone so we can hear it. <coughs> So at what point do we get to give instructions to this committee? Because I would like to propose that we instruct the committee to consult with outside organizations. Yeah, 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 uh, let, me, let me get the committee appointed first. OK, OK. <laughs> the chair of the meeting appoints, as chairman of the committee, Vincent Daugherty. Therefore, if you wish to be added to this committee later, you need to talk to Vincent. And in addition, Nicholas White, I have it written down. So the, the other members the chair is appointing at this time, and by the way, raising your hand will not get my attention. Um, so the chair is Vincent Daugherty. 
The chair also appoints Nicholas White, Chris Barkley, Kevin Stanley, Kate Secor, Michael Lee, and uh, Catherine Duvall, and um, John Hertz, conditionally on, uh, if he is prepared to co uh, cooperate with the committee's requirements. This is something that, I, that Mr. Dockery and I have discussed earlier. Again, anyone else wishing to do so? Elsewhere, otherwise. Okay. Um, the chair would like to ask unanimous consent to allow to allow us to refer the three Hugo proposals listed as sections D eight six through D eight to this committee with instructions to report to the main business meeting with any recommendations they may have with them. So. Uh, yeah. The chair is asking unanimous consent for this. Could you repeat those numbers, please? Okay. I will go to the page numbers to help you out. It's items D6, D7, and D8, beginning on page 29 of your agenda. Those are the three proposals near the end of the agenda for the division of the Hugo Award Best Novel category for the reorganization of the best related book, uh, risk related category, and for the best dramatic presentation reorganization. The three changes to the categories. The chair is asking unanimous consent to suspend any rules that would pro prohibit us from referring it to this committee with instructions to report back to tomorrow, uh, to the main business meeting with any recommendations. Is there any objection to doing so? Hearing none, the rules are suspended. The committee has these items refer to it. That means we will not take them up today in any way unless they come back with something that says they think we should consider it. Dr. Lurie, uh, you wished to make a motion giving further instructions to committee. Yes. Okay, Dr. Lurie. I would like to move that the committee be instructed to consult with organizations of those who would be impacted by these category changes such as ASPA and CIPLA. Okay. A moment. This time I want the secretary to get it written down before we continue. And whatever organizations they find, I don't think of at the top of my head. Ask that the committee be instructed. Let's go slower here so the secretary yes. can get it written down. Could you restate your proposal? I would like to propose that the committee be instructed to consult with, with organizations whose members would be impacted by these changes, okay. such as Aplin, ASPA, <laughs> CIFWA and ASPA. Is there, any, is there any objection to this? Objection. And there are, is there a second to the member's charge? There is a second. I, I think you that will take. All right, in that case, it's debatable. And, and there, there's about four, I'm going to say there's about four minutes available. So we've used up a whole lot of time. I heard that there was a second back there. You, uh, for what purpose? The, mem I'm not, wait, no, the member is, that was the second, right? Yes. It was the second. I saw the second. That was me. That's that, the second you knew by that. By that. Uh, there's about four minutes on this one, I think. So is it okay to say there's four minutes? All right. Is speech in favor of the proposal, Dr. Larry? Yes, I, I think that if we're going to be tinkering with categories that define things like professional artists, that it would be good to consult with people who actually are professional or fan artists, uh, as they may have greater insight than, than this body does. Okay. A, a moment before I continue here. How do we stand on recording? Do we need a time break? I hate to do this in the middle of the debate, but this meeting is in recess for one minute. Very well, this meeting will return to order. Do you have a parliamentary? The member will come to the microphone and state the parliamentary. I can't. I can't. I know it's loud for you, but it has to. I know it. My, my, my name is David Wallace, and my parliamentary inquiry is that since the committee is currently charged to report back to the main business meeting, Presumably tomorrow or such. I are they would this motion require them to consult with them before they report back to this business meeting, or is it simply before they bring final proposals to whichever?
business meeting it is to be he voted on. Okay. We understand. The committee would not be required to do consultations in the next 24 hours. No. Is the answer. <laughs> The, and I guess since it's, uh, this may this may be important here is that the the motion as proposed included a such as and listed names. That's a non-restricted list. Uh, such lists mean we these are suggestions of examples. It is not restricted. It could include other organizations as well. Just in case anybody wondered. Uh, speech against uh, you, I, you were actually I I know you were I'm not treating it as trying to get preference and recognition, you actually knew the timing on that. So go ahead, yes, Ms. Jones. Oh, sorry. I, My name I, is I, Terry Neal. I looked right through you to somebody else. <laughs> I, I'm terribly sorry about that. Terry. Um, the World Science Fiction Society is a fan organization. And I think that we need to do our rules ourselves. In this fan organization, we have many people who are professionals who are members of WISFUS and ASFA and publishers and all of that. And I think that I would welcome fans that are members of the World Science Fiction Society who are also professionals in the field to be consulted. But I don't think we want to go outside of WISFUS in order to be consulting in that way, if that makes sense. Very well, speech in favor. Um, Alex? Yes. Uh, I forget how your last name is spelled. ACKS. So um, I am Alex Axe, and um, well, I understand that WISFUS is a fan organization. When you're talking about defining what is professional versus what is fan, it is probably best to consider what professionals would consider professional. Um, because the thing is, a request to consult with these organizations and get advisement from them as to what might constitute a professional artist or a professional writer is not the same as allowing them to define it for us, but more information is better than less information, and it doesn't hurt to find out what uh, the organizations think. Here, here. Hey, a speech against uh, Mr. Yellow. about a minute left for each side at this point. Still Ben, yeah, well, uh, I trust Vince. I <laughs> do not see any reason to direct Vince to go consult with anybody in specific. If Vince thinks that he wishes to talk to members of CIFWA, he knows who they are. If he wants to talk to members of ASPA, he knows who they are. If he wants to consult with the rabid puppies who, under these definitions, are affected, he again has, he knows who they are and has the choice of whether or not to consult with them. Here, here. So I would urge a defeat of this amendment. Uh, speech in favor, and I, is there anyone else, is there anybody else who had not spoken with? Yes. Uh, is that how? Hi, my name is Jeremy Bill Dashoff. I happen to currently hold the title of Vice President for ASPA and Chair of the Chesley Award Committee, and all I was trying to do was volunteer that I am on site for council. Uh, speech against, with about 30 seconds left. Yes. Carl, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just consider this to be an unduly burdensome requirement in that with 20 categories, each of which impacts multiple organizations, the committee would be required to do perhaps 100 consultations. Uh, any further, uh, come on, anyone else? Okay, that was a speech against. Any further speech in favor? And since nobody else is asking, Alex, you get a second, you get a second shot at it. You may speak twice if nobody else wants to speak. And there's time left, which is about 30 seconds on that side. 45 seconds. I'm still Alex, and I don't know who the hell Vince is, so I don't have... This is not a slam on Vince, <laughs> but I'm saying that I can't necessarily be through personal knowledge that yada yada yada. So, I think 
that's a bit silly to say that that's why we should do this. I believe we've run out of time. We're going to talk about 15 seconds each, 15, 30 seconds each. Uh, is there any objection to ending the debate at this time? Hearing none, on the motion, to chart to instruct to this committee to consult with groups such as that might be affected by it, such as ASPA and so forth, but not necessarily restricted to it. All those in favor of adding of giving the committees those instructions, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed? Hands down, the negative has it, the motion fails. Okay, is there there's one in there? No, there's two. Oh my gosh. <coughs> <laughs> we'll try. Uh, the chair actually wanted to take a 10 minute recess at this point. Yes. It is uh, 11.35. This meeting is every objection recessing until 11.45. Could you stop, Mr. Bakri, a little, please? Uh, the, this meeting is in recess until 11.45. The, it is 11.45 and the meeting will return to order. I'd like, uh, can we please close one, at least one of the two doors now? expressing the sense of the business meeting. The proposal as submitted at B3 goes, is, starts on page 7 and goes on to the top of page 8. Um, it, uh, I'm not sure I need to read the whole thing. I certainly hope people have had a chance to read it and had a little bit of a break. There is an addition on page 9 an amendment by substitution. As you may recall from earlier today, an amendment by substitution, the question will first be on which version of the two is, is, is we will, will we work on. And once we've decided which of the two we want to consider, then we will actually consider it substantively. The chair proposes 20 minutes overall debate time for this. Is there any objection to this? Hearing none, 20 minutes. The substitute at B.3.1 is a, a, a different resolution to, uh, that covers the same ground. And, yes, and the, uh, rather than trying to restate it, the chair uh, would like to recognize uh, Mr. Harris to open the debate on this, on whether or not to use whether whether to adopt this not totally, but to substitute this for the original proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As um, many of you are probably aware, the main motion arose because of some concerns and queries over this year's Worldcon's uh, plans regarding distribution of souvenir books. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of that main motion, but to say that you know it's important not to just have an knee-jerk response to quite a narrow problem, because you then end up writing a resolution that just specifically deals with that instance and doesn't look at you know more broadly what's been going on with Worldcon um, in the, in the relevant area. Um, ben and I feel that um, the replacement motion is more suitable because it covers a number of things that have been going on. Um, it addresses some other gaps in our current guidance. But most importantly, it actually, the style of it is more fitting with our constitution. In general, we do not write detailed prescriptive guidance and instructions on how committees should conduct themselves. We tell them what they need to do, and we allow them choice of implementation. And some of the clauses in the main proposal are around exactly how they do things with membership databases and 
these and so on, we feel are just too detailed and will inevitably constrain committees in unintended ways. The first thing to say is what we've done this amendment is we've recognised that a valid concern has been raised and that some re-emphasis to committees, the standing resolution is, is justified. We've written in a way more in keeping with the Constitution. Secondly, as I say, we've broadened it. So primarily, the existing motion just talked about the rights of supporting members because that's where this year's problem had arisen. But the questions have been raised, like can we charge extra fees for printed publications? We already have that applying to attending members too. If you're a member of Helsinki and you want paper publications, attending or supporter, you, you have to pay an extra charge, and we should be codified and recognising that as something conventions can do. And thirdly, um, I've tried to put in a clarification here for something I've been speaking to committees about for three or four years. We've got ourselves in a slightly messy situation as we start to identify this um, option to charge people. For years, we used to write on our um, membership forms, do you want paper electronic publications? But what we actually did was we treated that as do you want paper or electronic progress reports? And then if you attended, you got a printed souvenir book regardless. And if you didn't attend or were a supporter, you got a souvenir book mailed out regardless. Um, we're still collecting one data point preference, but people are starting to project that they said printed publications, well, that they don't want printed, so they don't want a souvenir book. That's not my experience. There are lots of people who are happy to have electronic PRs, but still like the souvenir book mail. And therefore, you know, I think we need to probably collect two data points. You may or may not charge for them both, but I think if we want to be financially efficient, so not print things that we don't need to, if we want to be environmentally efficient, so we don't print paper people don't want, then we need to say, do you want an electronic, a paper, or no PR? Do you want an electronic paper or no souvenir book? And that means we just send votes to who, people who want them, and we just incur the costs that we need to incur. So I hope you'll consider this as a, a better and broader statement for what we need to do. Is there anyone who wishes to speak against substituting this for the main proposal? It's not. Hello. Rick Moen. Um, as Vince says, the main point of contention recently concerned the program, uh, sorry, the souvenir book. Uh, the uh, substitute motion has a major difference from the original motion that Joe Van Eckeren uh, wrote, which is it doesn't state anything about giving people advance notice about what, uh, how to exercise their preference, uh, which is really the essence of the difference um, between the two. Uh, this uh, doesn't really uh, even advise Comcoms that they need to give people timely notice of the choice. It just simply says that it should offer a choice. Thanks. Mr. Yellow? Two things. Uh, to address the speech it was uh, just delivered to the assembly. In some ways, we do <coughs> tell people that they should be giving timely notice. In the last section, we are specifying that if you're planning on charging people things, you should specify that as part of your bid filing. So that's about as timely as notice can possibly be given. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I specifically want to address has been the question of different rights for attending and supporting. Uh, our, as I say, as we say in the resolution, the rights of attending members are defined with respect to supporting members for publications in the Constitution. So you can't go running around giving supporting members fewer rights to publications than attending members because attending members are given explicitly the rights of supporting members plus, not minus. Before continuing, the chair has, uh, was reminded during the break to remind everyone here that when you're speaking at the lectern, you do not need to eat the mic. 
that one, those mics are actually set to be a bit more sensitive, so do not lean over into it, you're popping the mics. All right, um, that was a speech in favor of the substitute. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Dashoff, it opposed to the substitute. Is that your, is that what I have no idea. <laughs> Then the member has an inquiry. The member will right. come to the microphone and state her inquiry. Thank you. I have read both these. Oh, Johnny Bill Dasha. I have read both these proposals. I see no method for collecting the preferences of the supporting members who are by definition those who fight, vote in site selection and do not choose to upgrade. But the only way to collect that information is to have it as an item on the site selection ballot. Uh, Ms. Dasher, I, I hate to say this, I thought, but it does appear to me, especially since you prefaced it by saying it, it is in both of them, you're actually debating the underlying proposal, not the question of should we adopt the, the substitute as what we're going to debate. Your, I believe your debate would be better suited to once we've decided which of the two versions to consider. Thank you for answering my question. Very well ended. So we'll come back to it. Yeah, I, it's, yeah count, it, uh, count it as neutral. <laughs> <laughs> so both sides got charged. Is there anyone who, uh, that we were, we were looking for a, uh, a speech yes. opposed to the substitute? Uh, yes. Again, the only question here is whether we should adopt this substitute as the main subject to be discussed. We will then come back to discussing whether we should adopt it overall. Just still Joshua Ferngold. Um, while um, in general I like the simplification here, I consider it incomplete um, without um, uh, a mention of separate choices uh, regarding the uh, the different kinds of publications. Uh, that said, it is sufficiently difficult to amend that I think we should uh, that um, I think that amendment should happen later. Anyone else wish to speak in favor of the substitute in preference to the original? That was against. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at all to the Oh yes, sorry, Dr. Adams. You were speaking in favor? I apologize. I've been trying to catch you these angles. I agree. As it happens, that, that wedge over there of, of unoccupied seats will never get called upon, but that's good. You're all right. I'll be, I'll, this, your, you folks are actually shaded from me, so you need to be a bit more demonstrative. Yeah. Or move back a couple of rows. Thank you. Okay, fine. I'm Ray um, I support the, the uh, concept that the, they've been overly prescriptive um, in the uh, main motion, in particular with respect to this timing issue, having been involved in the, the development, particularly of souvenir books, um, that is a fast-changing area in how long it takes to uh, to get through this process. I think it's very overly prescriptive to give a specific time limit. These things are changing both ways depending on what we're trying to do with souvenir books. Um, so I think we should leave it to the committees with the guidance that's in this amended motion. Okay, uh, anyone else want to speak against the substitute? Anyone else want to speak at all on whether or not we should adopt the substitute as the main item? Okay, we'll bring it to a vote. On the question of adopting the substitute as the substantive thing we will discuss, this does not pass the substitute, it just replaces the original proposal with it and then we will debate whether to adopt the resolution. All those in favor of substituting B.3.1 for B.3, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The affirmative has it. The substitute is adopted as the main motion. The question is now on whether we should adopt three, the resolution 3, B.3.1 as a sense of meaning. A moment here while I check on time, time remaining. Uh, the chair suggests that we uh, allow another 12, that we reset the debate clock to 12 minutes. Is there any objection to doing so? Okay, starting with 12 minutes even, six each way. A uh, speech in favor of the resolution itself. Uh, okay, wait a minute.
And I am going to call, uh, if you want to call on uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Matthews, you're going to be next. Sometimes just wait to wait till I tell you to go. You're not being charged for just standing there. <laughs>
journey from that shock again. Um, uh, having been site selection admin twice, I have noticed that a lot of times there are supporting members who do not have email. That means to contact them to confirm that they want or agree to electronic delivery is they can't tell you that they need paper because they can't reach you electronically to tell you they can, can't handle electronic. So you're setting up a catch-22 if you don't have that option on the site selection ballot. You can always go back and tell everybody who has opted for printed that in order to do so, they will need to pay an additional money fee or how to connect to a print-on-demand or other such option. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. There are 30 seconds in opposition. Uh, yes, Mr. Wall here. 30 seconds left. Why don't you, get, you don't have to run, but one, it's 30 seconds when you start talking. <laughs> Renee Walling. In response to the previous speech, uh, the world can, I believe, can't purchase stamps and send letters. Um, second of all, if we do uh, take this amendment, I'd like to propose a second order amendment, which is to remove the word electronic from convention's electronic registration process, as many people still register on paper at conventions. That's a motion to suspend the rules to allow the introduction of the second order amendment. Is there a second to, his, to the motion to suspend the rules? Second. I hear a second. Two thirds vote being necessary to suspend the rules to allow the introduction of the second order amendment. All those in favor of suspending the rules, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. There being more than two thirds in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The second order amendment to strike from the First amendment, though, uh, it was the electronic, was the word exact? To strike the word electronic? Yeah. Yes. Very, there was almost no time left. Uh, is there any, is, is, is there debate on this motion? I just want to show hands of who wants to debate it. On removing the word? On removing the word electronic. Okay. It's only on the, on the second order amendment to strike the word electronic. Does anybody want to debate that? Hearing none, all those in favor of striking the word electronic from the first order amendment, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed? Hands down. Uh, the word electronic is struck from the second order amendment. We're back to the first order amendment. And the secretary is trying to catch up here. Uh, I'm going to check the time while she's doing that. Against the man amendment has expired. There's 30 seconds left in favor. Does somebody really want to use it? Okay. In a moment here, we will take. In that case, in that case, we will take a vote on this in a moment. The I'll read it back while the secretary is locating it. Um, this is an amendment to add to the B.3.1 an additional bullet point that reads. The option to sign up for the printed version of either or both publications should be included on the site selection ballots and through the convention's registration process. All those in favor of amending the resolution by adding that text, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down, the negative appears to have it. Division. Division. All right, that's going to be your first serpentine motion. <laughs> All right, a moment. The secretary is very much trying to find the the, the, the text here, and the, the deputy is getting it straight down. It was close. All right. The question before the meeting is whether to amend the resolution by adding that bullet point at the bottom of page 7. You are voting at this time. When you vote in the affirmative, you are, you are voting 
to add that wording. If you go negative, you're saying leave the original resolution alone. Is there anybody who doesn't understand what we are voting on? Just show hands. Thank you. Those in favor of the amendment will please rise. Oh, you're right. I have to stay. I have to stand in order to put this. I'm not voting. All right, then. Um, is there anybody on the head table who's voting on that? Uh, in the Thank you. All right, let me see here. We'll see. I'm trying to find the first lecture. Uh, we will start here. Actually, yeah, no, that's all right. The room's small enough. We can do this all the way. We're going to go all the way across and all the way back in, in serpentine fashion, starting with you. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Oh, no, too far back. Five. Six. Seven. Oops, we need somebody. Eight. Okay, let's see Ten. here. Ten. Ten. Thank you. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Yeah, wait, wait. You don't get all that there. Fifteen. 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 Sixteen. Let's take you to. Seventeen. Eighteen. Okay. Nineteen. Twenty. Okay. Go ahead and sit down. You're twenty-one. Twenty-two. 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 Twenty-three. Twenty-two was Lisa there. Twenty-three. You're twenty-three. Twenty-four. Let's get you in the back there. 25. Okay. 26. Come back. 27. 27. Was there anybody? 28. 28. I think, I think you're probably right. There were, we have two 23s back there. So we didn't correct it. So it's 29 in the affirmative, I believe. I heard 29 in the affirmative. Okay? And I see that the, that going all the way back and forth is not going to work. So, <laughs> all right, those opposed, please stand. We're going to do it one section at a time, starting over here. We'll go back and forth to the back, then we'll this center section, then the rear section. Thank you. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Nine was the, you got the number. Oh, oh, oh. Starting oh, oh. The first. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. Now start in the front. Start in the front. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Now up to here. Ready, sir. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. We've got them all. Okay. There are twenty-nine in the affirmative. And Five the negative. The negative has it. The amendment fails. <clears throat> that brings us back to the resolution. I'll sit back down again and give. For what purpose does the member rise? Let me give you back the microphone. Thank you. Yeah, go, go ahead. You can go ahead. And just, you, you do not have to stand. Yeah. If you want to, you can go up there. That's up to you. I have an inquiry about well, some of what was just discussed about the nominal fee for the paperwork. It seems that what what's in the proposal imposes what I can see some in. My name is uh, Pechev, and I'll spell it for the record. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, this does not appear, I object, this is, does not appear to be a formal entry. Yeah, the chair believes that yeah, I, was, I was going to give him a little bit more rope, but I'm afraid uh, I, it does not really sound like a parliamentary inquiry. The member is debating the substantive proposal. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're speaking either for or against it, I'm not sure. Probably against. No, but I, yeah. I was going to address the subject of the fee, which yeah, the, it, that is debate on the subject. It is not an I'm the chair of the chair. Yeah, it's not an inquiry. It's not a parliamentary inquiry. Apologies. No, it's okay. You don't ask. Are you? Is that all? Is that what you're asking? Is that it, would it impose an additional burden on future Worldcon committees? That's the only question I'm. I was going to suggest an amendment for the future tool. No, wait, wait, he yeah, could, yeah. could move an amendment, but I, but, but until but somebody has to be able to speak in favor of the resolution first. 
Is there anyone who wants to speak in favor of the basic resolution? Hearing none, the member will. Okay, that's all right. I, you, you, the member will state their proposed change. That's an amendment. You can do that. Yes. Well. Uh, yes, the member rules does need to speak a little bit louder into the microphone, though. What I was going to suggest is, in order to avoid what might be interpreted as a fee for paper, a fee for paper uh, documentation, to change it in a manner that would give some discount to those who choose to decline any paperwork in the, and receive everything electronically, something like that. I, I'm, afraid, I'm afraid I have to ask the member to come up with better wording and this is not going to work very well. I mean, it's, the, the wording is too diffuse for me to, for, for the head table to get it into a... Into a I, I understand the sort of intent is to restate it so that World Cards would give discounts, but I just... Mr. Chairman, is there a second? Yeah, is there a second to a, a general proposal to try and change it from a fee to changing it around, reversing it into a discount form? There is a second. But uh, in this case, I do believe that it is not that we need wording for this, and this this is not going to work here. Uh, I, I, I can see the wording. Uh, you want to, let me try before I recognize anyone else. He is the, he is the deputy chair and the parliamentarian. Okay. Ms. Riesling. How about World Cons may provide a refund to members who choose to receive publications electronically? And the strike zone. So choose to receive all yes. the publications. No. All right. And this, you know, it's too complicated. The chair thinks that we're going to, uh, the chair thinks the motion is sufficiently complicated that it would need to be, the whole thing needs to be referred to a committee for wording. Would the member consent to modifying their proposal to, to create a committee for this purpose to report back tomorrow? Yes. Is there, a, is there a second to the motion to refer the entire proposal to, with the a proposed amendment to yes. a committee? Second. There is a second. Is there an objection to it? Yes. yes. I thought there might be. All those in favor of creating a committee to consider wording to reverse additional fees into creating discounts. All those in favor of creating the committee to refer the matter, raise your hands. Hands down, all those opposed. Yes, the net hands down, the negative has the motion of third committee fails. Um, roughly speaking, the proposal is to, I believe, uh, Mr. Eastlick, if you, I believe the proposal is to... The work on may provide a refund to members who choose to receive publications electronically. Yes, that's the amendment. Is there a, is there a second to that as worded? Second. Second. Do we need to debate it further? Really? <laughs> yes. I could perhaps suggest an alternative wording. Alternative wording would be? Uh, World comms may offer. I think you're going to need to come to the microphone. Right. Uh, I'll put this down. Hi. Paul Shredderwager. Um, OK, so. For the, the, this, this suggested amendment, I would suggest the following wording for the, uh, the final clause. Instead of saying that Worldcom may charge additional fees to members who choose to receive any publications, we change that to Worldcom may offer a discount to members who choose not to receive printed publications. World, okay, is that wording acceptable? I to, have a question. All right, before I go on, the member, okay, the, the original maker has modified their motion. Is it still seconded? Yes. Thank you. Okay, the proposal is to amend the resolution by modifying the final clause to read Worldcons may offer a discount to members who choose to not receive printed publications. And the rest of the resolution, the rest stays the same. Okay, you have the floor to actually speak to this, but there is about how much? Four minutes? Two minutes? About five minutes total. Okay. If I, for what purpose did you want? Are you trying to debate it, or do you no, have? No, I have a question about the Constitution. Do we not already have a provision? Uh, you need to speak into the microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Terry Neal. Do we not already have a provision in the Constitution that allows? committees to charge extra for paper publications. Yes. That was my recollection. 
What's the actual wording in that section? I, I don't recall. Do you have a copy? Or well, we all have a copy. Like, the chair doesn't remember is the honest answer to that question. Okay. Oh, thank you. It would be in section 1.5 if it was anywhere. I don't think so. I don't see anything. I believe we've discussed it, but I don't think we ever adopted such an amendment. We discussed it a long time ago, several years ago. For what purpose does the member rise, Mr. Matthews? Parliamentary The member will come to the microphone and state his parliamentary inquiry. Wendy Matthews, I think that the amendment that is uh, is missing part of it because the rest of the Senate said to recover the associated cost. The amendment good. that doesn't have anything to do. Oh well, and strike out the words to recover the associated costs. Yep. Okay, and um, also to strike out the word any such or fees and insert discounts to make it consistent. Thank you. All right. All right. I'm going to try restating the whole phrase as far as I can find out here. Worldcons may offer discounts to members who choose to receive, who choose to not receive printed publications. Period. I know. Is that enough? Worldcons may offer discounts to members who choose to not receive printed publications, period. Any such discounts should be clearly set out as part of the convention's bid filing. And that would be the final version of the last clause if the amendment is adopted. There is about one minute remaining, as I recall. Anything left? There's three minutes total. Okay, fair. There's three minutes total. Let's. For what? Yes? Parliamentary inquiry, the member will come and state her parliamentary inquiry. I have it right here. That reads, no convention committee shall sell a membership that includes any WISPAS voting rights for less than the cost of the supporting membership uh, required by Article 4 in the selection of, that, of the convention. Oh, boy. <laughs> resolution, the chair in, in principle says it is pointless for this meeting to pass a resolution that is in, in, in direct contravention of its own constitution. And believe it or not, the chair is going to rule the parliament. The point, that's actually not a parliamentary inquiry. It's a point of order. And the chair takes the point of order as well taken. The amendment is actually out of order. <laughs> and I apologize, but I was like, okay. We are actually now back down to the original unamended resolution. Time remaining. Is there anybody else who still wants to debate it? <laughs> it, would, it would cause a violation. If we did it, it was a violation of section 1.5.8. And over here. Yes? I, I have a point of information. Uh, is, uh, there's no such thing as a point of information. Do you have a question, a parliamentary inquiry, or something of that nature? Or do you just wish to debate this motion in some way? This says to use point of information. The idea, we need to fix that. Go okay. on. <laughs> the member will come to the microphone and state the point they're trying to make. The chair will decide whether it is legal to continue with it. Go on, please. Wait till he gets there. Uh, Bruce Hallberg. And, and my question is, 
is the program guide considered part of the printed publication? Yes. yes. Oh, that's good. That's an, in, that's, a, that's an inquiry regarding the effect of the motion. That's right. It's not a point of information. A point of information is trying to provide it. It's a question regarding the effect of the motion. The chair rules that the convention's program guide is part of the publications as con contemplated by this resolution. Mm. There is a that, that's the chair's, is somebody trying to appeal that? Very well. You have about, there is, okay, because there is only, there's roughly two minutes left on this. Okay, very well. Is, okay, is the chair's ruling has that this would, that the program guide is part of the publications as contemplated here. Uh, the chair believes that the souvenir book and the program guide are part of the convention's publications. And that's the ruling of the chair. Uh, that's a speech in favor of sustaining the chair's ruling. Mr. Harris opposed to the chair's ruling. We've got about 30 seconds. I appeal this ruling on the basis of practical impact and custom practice. The main way in which we see what are actually generally distributed publications are one, under 152 is by seeing what conventions historically choose to mail out to supporting members and attending members who didn't actually show up. Other than when we've had extremely large, excessive print runs and lots of money left over, we have not for many years been mailing out the pocket program. I think there was one of the last ten I can remember that did it. Um, if we include, and Ben and I spent some time thinking about the wording, about what we were going to include in the wording as only PRs and souvenir books. If the ruling is uh, maintained by the chair, future cons are going to have to mail out and potentially print about you know, hundreds or thousands of additional pocket programs. The time to the date has ahead. expired against the chair's ruling. Um, the chair has made all the points he wants to make. Does anybody else want to speak in favor of sustaining the chair's ruling that the pocket, that the program guide is part of these convention publications? Very well, on this question, the question is basically, is the chair's ruling that the program guide is part of the publications as contemplated by this resolution. All those who believe the chair's ruling is correct and that the program guide is part of the publications, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The chair's ruling is overturned. The program guide is not one of the publications contemplated by this resolution. There is no more time left to debate this resolution unless the members wish to extend the debate. Hearing none, on the resolution, which has not actually changed at all. <laughs> on the resolution at, at B31 on page 9, all those in favor of adopting this resolution, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The affirmative has it. Resolution B.3.1 is adopted. And I believe we have the time to change at this point. Yes? This meeting is in recess for one minute. The meeting will return to order. Before we go on, and we're not going to get to committee reports today, unfortunately, we need to get nominations for the Mark Protection Committee. Uh, a moment while I get to that section, because I've got some names here. Page 35. Page 35. Page 35, item E.1.1. <coughs> the Mark Protection Committee consists of nine elected members and appointees from the three previous and two and future World Cons and Nastics. Um, the three members of the committee whose terms are expired this year are John Coxon, Linda Dinneroff, and Dave McCarty. The chair will assume that they are renominated. They have already given, I believe they've already given consent to be renominated. That's right. Um, in addition, uh, there was a, I believe there was a nomination for uh, Mike Wilmoth. And he has also, anything to ask given his, uh, are there other, any other nominations to elect people? We can elect, we'll elect three tomorrow to three year terms to the Mark Protection Committee. Any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, nominations are closed. 
Uh, all of the nominees have actually previously, uh, that, are, that you heard there, are all have already given consent to nominate, so the rest of that is irrelevant. We will vote on this tomorrow. We will elect up to, well, we will elect three members to, uh, of those four, out of those four nominations. Uh, before we go on constitutional amendments, Mr. Dr. T, you had an announcement regarding the Park Committee, I mean, not our committee, Hugo uh, Recommendations Committee. Many thanks, to the, many thanks to those who have already offered their uh, names. You can contact me at vincent.doherty at gmail.com. Given that we have one day until to report back to the committee and most of us are actually fully committed, uh, my assumption will be that the default will be that we will recommend the specific categories to the committee. This does not include the YA one, just to be clear. Um, however, those of you who are physically available, we would suggest we meet here at 9 30 tomorrow morning to discuss it. There is no other practical way of doing it today given the number of people who are already committed today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dockery. All right, we are running short of time. Uh, immediately after this meeting uh, at 1 o'clock is the uh, Vanish Inquisition. So we're going to run pretty close to that time, I suspect. Okay? If we don't get through all of this, we'll have to start taking it up tomorrow. Uh, this next section is constitutional amendments pending ratification. Debate on these proposals is not in order. This is debate time setting. Constitutional amendments are setting debate times for everything pending ratification. Yes, the member will state her inquiry. I am still Perry Ann Lurie. Uh, would it be in order to postpone indefinitely? At this moment? None of the constitutional amendments pending ratification can be postponed indefinitely. You right. cannot postpone indefinitely a, uh, a okay. ratification. Okay. Nothing on the, go to the next slide, Don, if you would. Sorry. Sorry. None of the things on this slide can be postponed indefinitely. They are, they are ratifications from last year. Okay. The chair is going to try, as you see a number of, uh, of Put motions up here, the time limits up here. The chair has proposed 10 minutes for best series, four minutes for an amendment to it, uh, eight minutes for item C2, December is good enough, eight minutes for two years are enough. Uh, no! I knew that was going to be a problem. Okay. 20 minutes for three stage voting or the only winning move is not to play. I'll talk about C.5 in a moment and 20 minutes for EPH plus. Are there objections to that as a group? Anybody? Let's just take those time ones. Uh, we take, therefore, C1, C2, C3, C4, and C6 are off the table for the rest of today. C.5 would be a motion to suspend E Pluribus Hugo for one year. All right, okay. The secretary's trying to get these, get caught up to where we are. What do you mean, Zach? I said all of them. They're all up there. 6.1 is not on the uh, C3 is all that's on the card. Okay, it's everything that was up that's up on up on the screen is what matters. C.1 is 10 minutes. C.1.1 is 4 minutes. C.2 is 8 minutes. C.3 is 8 minutes. C.4 is 20 minutes. C.6 is 20 minutes. Something that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> the 
secretary, the secretary has to lie just through a whole lot of material the secretary who has to get it absorbed before we can go on. Okay. Got them all? Yeah. All right. Item C.5 would be a motion to suspend E. Pluribus Hugo's uh, for one year. Is there a motion to do so? So, so now there's a motion to do so. <coughs> um, and I'm going to treat it in the nature of a constitutional amendment should it come up. I'm not, uh, not sure. Is it a resolution, you think? I believe this is a resolution and can therefore be dealt with by this meeting. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, you're probably right. It's a motion to, it, okay. Um, a motion to suspend E. Pluribus Hugo for one, for, uh, uh, for one year. And now you can move to postpone it indefinitely. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. We have four minutes of debate time on whether we should even consider a proposal to postpone E Pluribus Hugo. To, to, to suspend E Pluribus Hugo, sorry. For one year, we hear the motion to again. This is on whether we should just kill this without further debate. What? There's a, there has been a motion made to suspend E Pluribus Hugo for one year. A member has moved, and there's a four-minute total debate time, to squash the motion with no further debate besides this. The chair thinks this is perhaps a waste of time, possibly, to, because it was a resolution that could be just simply debated here right away. But the motion was, in fact, in order to suspend or postpone indefinitely. The member will state, the, member, the debate is on whether we should basically kill this motion with no further debate with about two minutes each side. The member will speak on, in favor of postponing indefinitely. Uh, Cliff Dunn, I think, A, I think E4 was Hugo, Hugo worked well, and B, I think it would be problematic for us to s suspend this for a year and then potentially flip back to it. That would just be confusing to everybody involved, so I think we should squash this bug right now. Mr. Yellow, in favor of considering the resolution. <laughs> Still bit yellow. We explicitly put in this bringing it back up to the business meeting for the business meeting to make its decisions. If we are in fact not planning on exercising the right of this assembly to make that decision, we should not have put this thing in in the first place. But since we did, we are turning. We explicitly, when we adopted EPH, we said that this meeting has the right to make decisions about it, and we should not squash the right of this meeting. About a minute left to say why we should not even be considering it. Mr. Cronenbaum. EPH is working. It's too early to suspend it. And I move that we uh, call the question. Second. Not the motion, the member's motion is out of order. You're not allowed to move to close debate immediately after speaking to debate. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see, that was a speech against consideration. Somebody wishing to speak in favor of consideration. Question. Uh, what's the question? How many years has the act completed? That's debate. The answer is one year. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dr. Adams, in favor of consideration of the motion. As Ben said, when we passed this, we decided that we should debate it every year for a few years to see if it was working. That debate should happen after we have this year's Hugo stats, which will be released on Saturday. After the Hugo's in the on Friday, we should not be postponing indefinitely, we should be postponing definitely to Saturday. If once the stats rise, everyone decides we don't need to consider it, then we make the decision. Does the member wish to move to postpone this motion, the vote, the original, the underlying motion, till tomorrow's, till the uh, be the summer, right? Saturday. Saturday business meeting. If it is within, if it is in order, I would like to postpone definitely. It is Saturday. the motion to postpone definitely no. outranks postpone indefinitely. <laughs> to these motions, okay? And the chair rules if the motion to postpone definitely passes, the motion to postpone indefinitely vanishes. Because by definitely postponing it, this meeting has said, yes, we want to consider it. On the motion to postpone until the Saturday business meeting, the re underlying resolution, a majority being necessary to postpone it to Saturday. Those in favor of postponing to Saturday, raise your hand. 
Hands down. Those opposed? Hands down. The motion to postpone that passes. A resolution, C.5, to suspend the EPH uh, for one year is to postpone no, no earlier than the Saturday business meeting, so it can't come up tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Pending ratification. What happened to 6.1? <laughs> Amendment to ratification. We're going to set the other side. No, that was a formal part of the EPA. Did you say C5? Did you say C5? All right, let me try this again because you are not paying attention. There are a total of six, actually seven, items that are on page 19 of the slide number 19. They are numbered C1 through C6. Each of them had a debate time limit on them. You agreed by unanimous consent to adopt all of the debate time limits um, that are on that page, including C.6. There is but no you, debate. But you also oh, have C1.1 1. 1. 1 up there. C6.1. Point of order of C6. For what, 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 what is the point of order? Remember, will come and state their point of order. Can I can yes. So uh, is C1, 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 the debate time for the amendment is set to a non-standard value of 4. C.6.1 is also an amendment, but without some special action, it's automatically five minutes for that amendment. Very much. What, what was the, uh, so what is the member's point of order? Right. The point of order is that we very clearly specified a debate time for C1.1 and C6.1 was not listed on that slide. So, uh, question is, is it, whether that's not on the slide back no, there? No, 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 no. C6 was, C6.1 was not listed on the slide. The members, what point of order is well taken? We missed it. It would, without any action on it, it has five minutes debate time by default. Does the, do the members are wanting to try and set some non-standard debate time other than the default of five minutes? I don't hear anything, so it will be five minutes. Everything on, oh, wait a minute, there is one thing. Yes. There is one thing, C.5. Um, we would, he did postpone it, actually, yeah, we postponed it definitely. Is there any objection to setting a, 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 a 10 minutes as the debate time on it when it comes back, if, if it, when it comes back up? Uh, and what is the inquiry? So, we have voted not only that Yeah, you're gonna, it's, you, it's more than a quick one. Come to the microphone. Yeah. Folks, we got very little time left, okay? And we're going to end up postponing some of this. Lisa Paddle, I just want to make sure I know what we just voted on. I know that we voted that we were going to debate postponing definitely. Have we, in fact, debated and passed? All right, I understand the inquiry. Let me state it. Okay, I'm going to go through slide C9. I'm going to go through slide 19 again. Carefully. This meeting has adopted a debate time limit on item C.1 of 10 minutes. This meeting has adopted a debate time limit on the amendment C.1.1 of four minutes. This meeting has adopted a debate time limit on C.2 of eight minutes. This meeting has adopted a debate time limit on C.3 of eight minutes. This meeting has adopted a debate time limit on item C.4 of 20 minutes. This meeting started to debate a postponed indefinitely motion, but then postponed definitely the entire issue to the Saturday business meeting. In doing so, you killed the motion to postpone indefinitely. The motion to postpone indefinitely is gone. It will not and cannot come back up. The Saturday business meeting will consider the motion to suspend with a debate time limit of 10 minutes. This meeting has adopted an amend, uh, on item C.6 a debate time limit of 20 minutes. There is an amendment ad adhering to it that has not been discussed. It has a debate time limit of five minutes by default. Are there any questions about the debate time limits on this slide? Hearing none, we're going to go on to the next slide. Okay. All right. We 
are on slide 7, C.7, defining North America. And C8, and C9, and C10, and C11, and C11.1, and C.12, which we're going to come, to, which we're going to take up at the very end of a question on suspension of it, possibly. The chair has proposed debate time limits as shown, uh, respectively, 4, 8, 8, 8, 20, 4 minutes for the amendment. Are there any objections to adopting those debate time limits now? Hearing none. We have adopted debate time limits for C.7 for 4 minutes, for C.8 of 8 minutes, for C.9 of 8 minutes, for C.10 of 8 minutes, for C.11 of 20 minutes, for the amendment C.11.1 of 4 minutes. Is there anyone who has any question about the debate time limits of items C.7 through C.11.1? Yes, can you do it after the meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. C.12 would be a motion to suspend the 5 and 6 proposal for next year. Is there anyone who wants to move that motion to suspend it for one year? <laughs> The is, there, is there a motion to suspend five and six for a year? I'll make a motion. Okay, and it's been seconded. And I believe there's a motion to postpone the consideration of this till Saturday's business meeting. Yes. Is there any objection to postponing it until Saturday's meeting? Okay, before, I, I should have actually set the bait time one that's potentially there. Um, Ten minutes? Okay. C.12 has 10 minutes time on it, C.12, 10 minutes, and is postponed until Saturday's business meeting. All right. All right. Constitutional amendments, and we are definitely running out of time. If we run completely out of time, we're going to have to do a bunch of stuff tomorrow at the beginning. That's what you do if you want to spend all your time debating your resolutions. D.1. I got to get there's so many pages down the list here. Thank you. Uh, D.1 is a constitutional amendment to replace the wording in section 2.2 that fix, has fixed wording for what uh, World Concert is published in their publications with a, a somewhat more variable wording that delegates the job of coming up with the wording to the Mark Protection Committee. The chair suggests four minutes. Is there any objection to this? Now, by the way, at this point, these are new constitutional amendments. As I bring them up, if you are trying to postpone them indefinitely, it's this is the point where you start jumping in when we get to that item, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to try and make this march. Item D.2 is, a, a is called the Reasonable Amendment, which would uh, strike the word best and insert reasonable in section 3.8.5. Chair suggests four minutes for this. Is there any objection? Uh, next is Make Room, Make Room, which is to change the, uh, the leeway item in the, in the written fiction categories to from uh, striking out the lesser of 5,000 words or from the restriction so that it would simply be a 20% restriction at the category boundary. And the chair suggests six minutes for this. Any objection? Right. Number four is the second YA amendment, this motion is only operative if we actually ratify the, um, the, the YA proposal that is uh, pending. But uh, if, if it is ratified, it would be a, a proposal to actually give a name to the award. And there is actually one item, one name already suggested by the committee. This, uh, uh, yes? Sorry, I was going to move to postpone this definitely. Okay, yeah, go ahead and come up. The, 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 come up. The, 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 let me get the debate time on it first. The chair suggests 16 minutes. Is there any objection to that? Yes. All right. There is a there are objections. In that case, uh, microphone. Sorry. Oh. 
I, I pumped the, the power switch. Let's see. There, there I am. Sorry about that. Pumped the switch. Um, where were we? Yes. The, the naming of the award uh, is a separate issue from having the award itself. Should we actually get as far as that? Um, the, the, the chair's default has been objected to, and therefore we need to go through a list of possible. Let's have some time on that. Uh, no, what? The time, we need to get the time limit settled before we do the, the no, 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 Very well, yes. Uh, go ahead, and the member will come and state of this motion to postpone it, I believe. Hi, we'd like to postpone this until the second main business meeting, which um, I'm Saturday. Saturday. Um, and the reason is because if the, the original award is passed and we come up with um, a name, we, what we need to do is uh, have a ballot so that we can have an instant runoff vote, or at least that's what the committee is recommending, that we have an instant runoff vote of uh, a, a ballot that will take place at the beginning of the second main business meeting so that we can then go and run it all up yeah. and then yeah. come back and vote on it. The, the chair suggests that it would probably be more practical if we just postpone this, this item to be taken up immediately there at, immediately after the vote on the YA proposal's ratification. Exactly. And, and if at that time, the members choose to make a bunch of nominations. We could then create a ballot and take the vote the following day or at some later point. If we postpone D4 to, to happen right after the YA award. We can, we can. Well, what, we can. Uh, that what will happen is, at least what we've recommended, is that ballot nominations can be made anonymously up to the, the table throughout today and um, tomorrow. And then we will collect everything and make a written ballot which will then um, be debated and voted on on Saturday. Yeah, the chair would really rather if we did start to nominations if we waited to even thinking about it till we have to decide whether there's something to worry about. And then do deal with it tomorrow after the YA vote. Okay. I mean. The, so the chair's suggestion is to postpone D.4 to be taken up right after the uh, the YA award itself. Should that be ratified, we take this up and then we start probably getting names proposed for it, and then we probably will then postpone the actual vote on the names to the following meeting. So postpone to Friday. Postpone to Friday, immediately following wherever the Y, whichever one the Y is actually on there. C11. C11? Yeah. yeah, after we, yeah, C11 and C11.1, it would follow that, and we take care of D, and we take care of D.4 at that point, probably just to take on, start taking nominations for the duration of that meeting. I mean, in effect, it's essentially the same, but we would want to have the debate of all the names that are nominated. I don't that want the motion uh, postponed. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, um, basically, we need to um, uh, have some discussion on the process, which means we need to take up the meeting. Okay. <laughs> Is anybody un un unclear on what the chair is proposing? No. All right. Is there any objection to handling it that way with that postponement? Yeah. Okay, fine. Just a moment. And the time time on it is set at 16 minutes. Okay. Next is. Terry Neal. Uh, four minutes to, 
Your body. <laughs> um, I am moving to postpone this indefinitely because I think that um, it imposes a weird and strange burden on committees. And if we want to do something like this, that we should uh, possibly bring it up next year when we've had more time to beat it a bit. Uh, all those, okay, is there somebody who wants to speak in faith? This is actually the last item before adjournment. Thank you. Yes, because we did, ex we did deal with the next the stuff on the next page. I'll let it go forward next year. Okay. Uh, Someone who wants to, that was a speech against considering D5. Who wants to speak in favor of considering? Anybody who's not? Mr. Cronengold. It sounds to me like um, that speech in favor was really a speech in favor of sending it to a committee, in which case we should reject, reject the postpone indefinitely and send it to a committee. Not a speech in favor. Da, 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 da. The members will refrain from calling out comments from the audience and will address their comments through the chair. I'm insistent upon that. Mr. Yellow, speech in against consideration of motion. I believe this is taking a short term approach. And we don't need a committee, we can just kill this and the original maker who has uh, indicated that he has no objection, in fact, to letting it die now. Uh, we should let it die now and allow the original maker more time to consider all the implications. If he wishes to consult with other people, other people are always available. Is there anybody else who wants to speak in favor of considering the motion? I think we're ready to vote on this. A two-thirds vote being necessary to kill this without further debate. All those who are who all those who wish to postpone it indefinitely, that is to say, to kill it now. All those who want to kill this motion, raise your hands. Hands down. All those who want to consider it at this World Con, raise your hands. Hands down. There being more than two-thirds in the affirmative, the motion is postponed indefinitely. D5 will not be considered at this World Con. Now, a moment, the chair needs to let you know, D6, D7, and D8, the next slide, have been uh, sent to the Hugo Committee we created. They will come back tomorrow with potential recommendations having to go with it. All the committee reports get postponed until later in the convention. We are, is there any objection to adjourning at this time? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>